Right, so before we knit the Santa Christmas decoration, I thought I'd go over what you'll need for this project. I'm knitting it on a Brother 950i knitting machine. Uh, that's an electronic knitting machine, but I don't use much of the electronics and actually the patterning in a normal standard gauge machine with a, a, a punch card reader will be fine. Uh, you could also use a silver reed machine or a knit master machine or any other standard gauge just obviously the instructions will be slightly different uh, for things like holding position, weaving brushes, that sort of thing so you'll just have to look into your own instru instruction manual to figure out how to do that. So alongside that I'm using a ribber attachment which uh, attaches to the bottom of the machine like so um, you don't have to have a ribber um, and you could actually do just a normal hem with stocking stitch um, for the ribbed sections and I'll explain at what point to do that and how to do that at that point in the pattern. So these are essential but um, it's, what I, it's what I'm using for this pattern. Um, you'll also need um, a yarn mask. I recommend a double uh, the double colour changer mask because, for the Brother machine because it has a much better tension than the mats that comes with the machine. Also you'll need a double eyed bodkin if you're using the ribber that just transfers stitches over and you'll need some transfer tools. I recommend a at least a one on the end and a three on the end one. If you drop any stitches I find this tool really useful. Um, I got it at a craft fair, I think, but you're probably able to get it on places like eBay or Andy Knits, or I'm sure Irene Court has these as well. Um, and um, just um, it has a pointy end, and it just enables you to pick up the stitches if you drop them really easily. A selection tool, just a one by one selection tool. Um, for the ribbed sections, I use the standard 65 to 65 needles either side of zero. Um, ribber comb. We have the sinker plates for the standard main bed knitting that's already on the machine at the moment and then we also have a sinker plate for the ribber. We have three ribber weights. And we have two little claw weights. Okay, this is the fine knit bar. It usually comes with the ribber, but you can get them separately. But it just literally slides into this little metal bit here, just over that on the main bed. There's a groove on the other side that you can see, and it just slides over. For yarn you will need some red yarn, white yarn and black yarn and flesh yarn. Uh, so the yarns I have used um, have been a bit of a mix because it's just what I happen to have. I knit in either 230s or 228s. 230s is slightly thinner than 228 but you can interchange each. Okay, but Obviously if you're knitting two strands of a colour, knit two strands of the same thickness of yarn. Um, so my yarn that I've been using um, with this project is red 230s from Yeoman. I've been using white 228s from BSK and I've been using a flesh colour 230s from Yeoman again and I've been using black 228s from BSK. Okay so for the coat section I've got two strands of a 230s in red and two strands of a 228s in white um, in both my um, my feeders in number one and number two. Okay, so let's just go and begin the coat section now. Okay, so let's knit the coat section now. This is by far the most complex part of the knitting pattern. It involves casting on using the weaving cast on, um, casting on stitches in the middle of the pattern, casting off stitches in the middle of the pattern, using the holding position, and so just various different techniques, um, and it just gives you an overall grounding of lots of these techniques. So if you are, are quite a beginner on the machine, this is quite a good pattern to teach yourself 
an overall grounding of the machine and where, where you can go on uh, to do other things after. Okay, so shall we begin? So, as you can see, I've already brought my needles into working position. I've got 16 needles on the left of here and 16 needles on the right. I'm going to cast on using the weaving cast on, so using my selection comb, I'm just going to bring every other needle forward. Then using white yarn, and with a tension set at one, my weaving brush is selected up. I just put my yarn into the feeder and then just drape the yarn over all the needles and just knit one row. Right now I'm going to knit about four rows and um, just put my row counter to zero and then we're going to hang the claw weights. So just hanging the claw weights off to the left and right hand sides of the work. I'm going to take my weaving brushes off now. And then now I'm just going to knit until the row counter shows 19 rows. Sometimes that end stitch doesn't always knit right off, so just make sure you keep an eye on it and just bring that needle back to knit that stitch. Now I'm just going to break the yarn. Now I'm just going to join on red yarn and knit one row. Okay. I tend to knot these two ends together. Um, it just keeps them nice and secure and um, stops them going anywhere. Just bring that to the middle. Now we're going to knit another 29 rows, so the row counter should show 49 uh, rows once we've completed this part. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to start forming the arms. So to do this, I'm going to cast on 12 stitches to the right hand side of the work. I'm going to do that by bringing these needles right out into the D position. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm now going to E wrap those um, stitches, sorry, needles. I also like to E wrap the last needle. Okay, now I tend to bring the weaving brushes up for this section. I just find that the brushes help the stitches knit correctly, especially when you've got things in D position and etc. But I will take them off in a few rows. Okay, and so we're just going to knit one row now, very slowly. And then we're just going to do the same on the other side of the work, so another 12 rows with an E-wrap cast on. Apologies, I realised I just said rows, I actually meant 12 needles. Okay. Sometimes when you're doing this, the, um, the yarn can get caught um, on the um, underside of the carriage on the brush here, so just be careful that you make sure that's nice and free before knitting the next row. Sometimes the tension on the mast has loosened a little bit so it's important to just um, pull that yarn back to tighten up the tension. Then we're going to just knit one more row. Okay the row count should be reading 51 rows now and now we're going to knit another 12 rows. I'm just going to knit four rows and then I'm going to bring my claw weights up and take my weaving brushes off. So we're just going to hang the claw weights again on these left and right hand side. Okay. 
I did have an accidental one where I accidentally left the claw weights at the bottom of the work and didn't bring them up at all and it did actually knit okay but I think just to be safe it's always good to bring your claw weights up throughout the work especially when your piece is getting larger and, and narrower. And I'm going to take my weaving brushes off now as well. Okay, so I'm going to knit the remainder of the 12 rows and that will bring us to 63 rows on the row counter. Okay, so now we're at 63 rows, we're going to form the hole for the, for the head to go through. To do that, we're going to use holding position. That's this little H here on the left hand side of the machine. It may differ depending on the machine you've got. If you're unsure, just look up in your knitting machine manual what that is. So we're just going to turn that to H. I'm going to take the working yarn out and I'm just going to bring it under and drape it on that left hand side of the machine. There's actually a little groove there um, to put that. So after I've just taken the working yarn out and I've put it on the right hand side of the machine, I'm just going to bring all these needles to holding position except for the centre 10. So you should be 5 on the left and 5 on the right of 0 in working position here. I'm going to take the white yarn, uh, this is my waste yarn. Um, you can use another yarn if you wish, but because this is readily available and it's only a tiny bit of yarn, I just always use what I'm working with to be easy. Okay, so we're going to knit 10 rows of waste yarn knitting. Now that should have just picked up the 10 middle stitches. I tend to just grasp it a little with my finger and thumb just to act as a bit of a weight there. Um, and just knit another 9 rows. Break the yarn and now I'm just going to take these needles all the way forward and all the way back to drop this from the machine and then literally just took that down. We will cast those off by hand later. Now I'm just going to bring every other needle into working position. Now, there's a lot going on in this stage, so it's really important to concentrate um, and just work methodically. I have written it all down in the in the written pattern, but I'll explain it all here as well. So, we've brought these needles in. We're going to take our machine back into normal knitting, which is the N. We're going to take our yarn that we were working with and put that back into the feeder. Make sure it's all the way at the back. Just correct the tension on the yarn mask by pulling it down a bit and um, put the weaving brushes on. I know I love the weaving brushes, and then one row all the way to the left. Now, every other needle should have picked up here, as you can see. Um, so, what we're going to do now is bring every other needle into working position and knit one row. This um, actually enables you to get a nice little cast on. It's not perfect, but for what we're working with, for a toy where the neck you're not really going to see, um, it's quite an easy, quick way to just get these needles cast on in an effective manner. So just knit one more row. And those have all cast on perfectly. Okay, so we should be at... 75 on the row counter, but because we've knit 10 rows of the waist, I'm going to put that back to 65. We're now going to knit another 12 rows, and that's going to take us to 77 rows on the row counter. After about four rows, just take the weaving brushes off again. Weaving brushes coming off. We've got to 77 rows, so now we're going to cast off our sleeves. So to do this, I cast off behind the gate pegs, and so I'm just going to cast those 12 needles to the right um, 
uh, back to 16, 16 needles to the right, which we started off in the pattern. Okay, so we're back to 16 needles. I'm just going to take the claw weight off, release that from the machine, just so only that needle is hanging, and then just hang the claw weight again at the right hand side of the work. Then we just need to make sure that yarn is not tangled up in the weaving brushes. And Again, pull down on the yarn to make sure you've got enough tension and knit one row. Okay, so now we're going to cast off the 12 stitches to the left of 16. So we're left with 16 to the left and 16 to the right of zero. So we're back at 16. Just take that claw weight off and release that work and then just hang the claw weight again. Make sure that's not tangled, bring up the slack. So we should be at 78 rows on the row counter now. So now we just want to knit another 31 rows um, of red um, and we should be at 109 rows on the row counter when we're done. Okay, so now we're going to break the red yarn and join on white. Just knit one row. Tie a knot again. Now we're going to knit another 19 to 20 rows of white. It doesn't really matter um, how uh, whether it's 19 or 20 it just depends whether you want to end on the left hand side of the machine or the right hand side of the machine now I tend to cast off behind the gate pegs for this but if you want to take it off on waist and then just bring the the yarn end through all the all the open stitches like a bind and tie like in some of the other sections of the pattern that's perfectly acceptable as well it just really depends on your personal preference So I prefer a cast off from the left hand side behind the gate pegs because I'm right handed. So I'm just ending on the left hand side of the machine. So I'm just going to cast off behind the gate pegs. I'm going to cut the yarn. Take the claw weights off first. I'm just going to put you through. There you have it. So this is the coat. So you should be able to see that it's a totally symmetrical pattern. We started with the the bottom white border which we are going to curl up um, and sew later. Then we increased for the sleeves here, we formed the hole for the head, then we decreased for the sleeves again, then we knit the rest of the body and then we ended with that white hem again. And they should be able to fold it halfway. And I will show you later on how to sew this all up. Okay. And you can see here there's your little waste yarn, and we'll cast that off um, in a bit. Okay, so we're going to knit the body for the Santa now. Uh, this forms the uh, the base um, for the head um, and the body that's underneath the coat and the legs that will form underneath the bottom of the coat. 
Okay, this is similar to my other pattern, the snowman, and I use this as a basis to how I designed this centre. Um, so let's go ahead and knit it. So we're going to knit it on 52 needles, uh, which is 26 to the left of zero, 26 to the right of zero. Again, we're going to do a weaving cast on so that we can gather the stitches at the end. So we're going to start off with black yarn. Again, with all these patterns, um, for most of them, the bits of this this pattern, it's um, the tension of one. Weaving brushes should be up, into the yarn feeder, and drape that over and knit one row. Now I'm just going to change my row counter so it's at zero. And I'll just knit four rows. I'm just going to hand my claw weights. And I'll take my weaving brushes off. Now I'm going to knit a further five rows for a total of nine rows on the row counter. Now I'm going to break the yarn and join on white. I'm just going to knit two rows. Just knot together the white and the black. And cut the white. Now we're going to change the red yarn and knit 48 rows. The row counter should read 59 rows once we finish this section. So just knit one row and then knot those two ends again. Now another 48 rows. Just break off that yarn. Now we're going to change to pink yarn and knit 26 rows and the row counter should read 85. Just knot those together after one row like we have been doing. Just mind you don't get any of the previous knitting caught behind the gate pegs that sometimes can happen as I've just shown there. Um, just release that and it's all fine. Okay, so we're going to increase the main tension to plus two. So that is one plus two, which is three. And then we're going to knit two rows. Now we're going to go to main tension plus four, which is another two, so that's up to five. And again, we're going to knit two rows. And now we're just going to bind and tie, as, as I call it. I think that term was from Jean Green now, I think, um, in, when I my, my hand knitting days. So just a nice long yarn end. And I take my double knit, double eyed bodkin, thread the yarn, and we're literally going through the open stitches. Now it's a little bit easier if we take the weight off. Just literally pulling that forward and just going through the open stitches. And 
now just go through every few stitches and then thread it all the way through and then go again it's just a bit easier because you can't get all these stitches on the one bodkin well you might be able to but you'll be making life very hard for yourself and just literally flick it with the needles and then this should gather when you pull that yarn, yeah, you can see those stitches are coming in like that. And then again, the bottom one should gather as well, because you've got the weaving cast on there. And this will form the body. So that's the boots. And that's the head. And I'll show you how we sew this up later. Okay, so now we're going to knit the cuffs and the hands. To do this, we're going to pick up the edge of the arms, arms or sleeve section, whichever you want to call it, um, onto the machine. I found that there are six to the left and six to the right, so 12 um, needles worth along this edge. So I'm just going to bring them out by hand. So six to the left and six to the right, so 12 needles. Then I'm just going to take my free need needle bodkin and just pick up three to the right edge and hang them onto the needles then just going to take three from the left edge and hang them onto the corresponding left needles and then just hang the edge in between like so if you find that you think this is more or less uh, for your piece, just use your own judgment. It doesn't really matter as long as you picked up that edge neatly. Now we're going to be knitting this at a tension of one. I put the weaving brushes up for the first few rows. Row counter set at zero. I'm taking our white yarn, placing that into the feeder. Just knit one row. Now push the piece between the beds. And then just continue knitting and we're going to knit up to 16 rows on the row counter. After about four rows, just cancel the weaving brushes. You can hold on to the piece with finger and thumb just to give a bit of tension, but it doesn't need a lot. So that's reading 16 on the row counter. Now we're going to reduce the tension um, to make th this edge a bit easier to sew up later. Okay, so I'm going to go down to a tension of main tension plus two, which is three, and I'm going to knit two rows. Row counter reads 18. Then again, going up to a main tension plus 4, which is a tension of 5. Knit another two rows. Now the row counter should read 20. I'm just going to cut off a length. And taking my double eyed bodkin, just going to thread that up. And just going to bind and tie. So just take that through the open stitches. Flick that off the machine, and you can see that edge is like a we, like um, the cast-ons with offs we've done before. So it does gather, but you don't want it to. But because this edge is going to be rolled in, it doesn't really matter what that edge looks like. Um, and I just felt something quick and easy will be the best for this bit of the pattern. Now, just set your needles again. Put, um, put the row counter back to zero and now we are going to again we're going to pick up along this edge but we're going to go through the exact same holes that we have already used so those three along the edge but I tend to just do it right along because we're using the same holes
is a bit easier because you've, they're already well defined. And again, we want to be at attention of one. Weaving brushes up, then using flesh yarn, place that into the feeder, knit one row. I tie these two to the white and the flesh together. And then again, just push all that on the inside of the machine. Now we're going to knit another seven rows to make eight rows on the row counter. Again, when you've knit four rows, just cancel the weaving brushes. Reduce the tension again, so with main tension plus two, so it's for a tension of three. And just knit two rows. And now we're just going to cut the yarn. Row count should read 10. And again, thread it with a double eyed bodkin. And we're just going to bind and tie again, so just go through all those open open stitches. something there we go so just flip that off the machine and this one you will want to gather because this is the end of the hand and there you go so you can see where the edge of this sleeve is you've got the cuff which will be able to roll and inside that you've got the hand okay <laughs> 